Following the footsteps of the discoverers of the Canadian Rockies who found that life was a grim business as they charted their routes and laboriously surveyed the first maps of Canada's fabulous country, today's explorers speed by train to Banff and Lake Louise, there to enjoy the acme of holiday thrills, trail riding in the Canadian Rockies. From the Pacific, this land of the high riders is reached within 20 hours. To an age-old theme of swift flowing waters, the deep-toned whistle of the diesel echoes a modern counterpoint. And clear mountain sunlight pays its tribute to the conquest of the mountains by the Canadian Pacific Railway. Long before the train stops at Banff, the wide car windows have framed tantalizing glimpses of this scenic wonderland to whet the appetite for closer enjoyment from the back of a sturdy mountain pony. The town of Banff, resplendent in its mountain setting, is a mecca for nature lovers who revel in the public gardens surrounding National Park headquarters. Like a baronial castle, luxurious Banff Springs Hotel dominates the Bow Valley. A near neighbor in the 2,500 square miles of Banff National Park, but 40 miles from Banff, is Chateau Lake Louise, named for a jade green lake encompassed by scenic pony trails. But Highline riders scorn pampered luxury. Boots and saddles, Levi's, campfires, teepees, these are the life. Fancy baggage left behind at the hotel, the trail riders rendezvous with the remuda by sightseeing bus. Now the real fun starts. Sleeping bags, personal dunnage and stores are diamond hitched on the pack train. Mounts are selected to fit all types and sizes of riders. Wranglers offer friendly advice. Check cinches and stirrups, outline the route, and the trail ride sets forth in search of the high country. The trail riders of the Canadian Rockies, founded in 1923 by John Murray Gibbon, noted Canadian author and poet, is international in its scope. Its roster includes members from North and South America, Europe, Australia, New Zealand, and the Far East. It ranges from commoners to kings, from bronze-badged veterans of one ride to gold-buttoned aristocrats of a thousand miles and more, from sevens to seventies. Each July, members four gather at Banff or Lake Louise to try new trails, greet old friends, and meet new members. The only qualification for membership is a love of the high country 
and an appetite for scenes unknown to less strenuous vacationists. By easy stages, the base camp is reached. Teepees are pitched, stake, and peg. Wranglers make easy work of sawing and supplying wood for the supper fire. But you make your own bed redolent of mountain evergreen boughs and softer than any townsman enjoys. Work for all hands and all ages guarantees healthful sleep. need for an alarm clock, the dawn chorus sung by western bluebirds, whiskey jacks, magpies and warblers greeting the sun wakes you to another day of high adventure. Last night's sing-song around the campfire with its accordion obligato was fun. And an equal community spirit characterizes morning ablutions. The clean, sharp tang of mountain air, the spicy fragrance of jack pine and larch, the delicate perfume of alpine wildflowers are gone in a flash when the breeze from Cookie's Corner comes your way with the unforgettable smell of trout in the pan, with the sizzling sound of bacon and eggs. Topped off, of course, with steaming coffee.
According to the old saying, women's work is never done, at least not by the men. The tallest blue skies, the whitest white clouds you have ever seen. Surprising green meadows valleyed between snow-capped peaks. Tumbling torrents, crystal cascades, glittering glaciers. Carpets of wildflowers following successive spring seasons at successive altitudes. All these Greek trail riders of the Canadian Rockies on such rides as Goat Creek Trail to Mount Lougheed beside the Spray Lakes. Brewster Creek through Allenby Pass to Cascade Rock. A Cinnaborn Pass to Sunburst Valley by aptly named Cerulean Lake for a marvelous view of Mount Assiniboine. Or the mile-high Cascade River Valley between the Cascade and Palliser Ranges to Block Mountain around Pulsatilla to the headwaters of Johnson Creek. No matter how you feast on beauty, there are other hungers in this crisp mountain air, and noon calls a halt to sightseeing. Once again, the campfire smoke climbs skyward like an Indian signal. There's time for fun. For nature study. And for water sports. For those who revel in a nice cold bath the year round. Brook trout, if you can catch them. But the sandwich lunch is tasty and satisfying. Trail riders know why the Indians people the mountains with great spirits. They're almost literally on top of the world as succeeding rises unfold new panoramas of unforgettable beauty. Snowfields bordered by windflowers, globe flowers, Indian paintbrush. The myriad alpines that make this high country a botanist's paradise. Rock-strewn valleys peopled by very inquisitive hoary marmots whose high piping whistles perhaps express amazement at the showy western clothes of eastern chichacos. And peaks such as misnamed Lilliput, Troll Tinder from the nursery rhymes, Mount Niles, Emerald, Wapta, Cathedral. Trail riders know Lake Oisa, Lake O'Hara, Lake MacArthur, Lake Wapta, Ross Lake, 
Nareo, Sherbrooke Lake, Lake Celeste, Lake Yoho, and Ferry Creek, Little Yoho River, Emerald River, Sherbrooke Creek, Waves Creek. Fall of the Waves, Twin Falls, Laughing Falls, Takakaw Falls. As familiar as Broadway and 42nd Street, to those who ride the Rockies range are Emerald Lake Chalet, Yoho Valley Lodge, Lake Wapta Lodge, Lake O'Hara Lodge, Moraine Lake Lodge in the Valley of the Ten Peaks. Time has no meaning in the wonderland of the Canadian Rockies. Day follows day as quietly and steadily as the gentle footfalls of the steady mountain ponies along the high trails. Trail riders store up memories of each excursion to last them until they can next answer the call of the wild. Taken on the trail ride will beguile many a long winter evening and conjure up colorful visions of happy days spent riding high.